Once there lived a beautiful girl named Cinderella. She lived with her stepmother and her two ugly stepsisters. They were very unkind to her and made her do all the work. One day there was an announcement in the streets. The prince is going to select his bride. All the young maidens are invited to the ball at the palace tonight. Cinderella's stepmother wanted to send her two daughters to the ball. You must go, my beautiful daughters. Yes, yes mother. mother. Poor Cinderella also dreamt to go to the ball. So, she asked the permission of her stepmother. Can I also go to the ball? The prince is looking for a bride and he won't be interested in girls like you. You stay at home to wash the dishes and scrub the floors. Cinderella became very sad. Suddenly there was a flash of light. and they appeared a gracious lady i am your fairy godmother my child i'll help you to go to the ball but how just wait and see my child the fairy took a pumpkin and with a magic wand changed it into a golden coach She changed six mice into six horses and another mouse into a coachman. She then transformed Cinderella's stone dress into a royal satin gown and gave her a pair of beautiful glass slippers. Cinderella, you have time only till midnight. Midnight? Midnight. Then everything goes back to the way it was. Now into the coach and don't forget. I won't. She rode away to the palace in the golden coach. 
In the satin gown and glass slippers, Cinderella reached the palace. Cinderella walked into the ballroom. As soon as the prince saw her, he was enchanted by her beauty and grace. And they instantly fell in love with each other. They danced the whole night. Cinderella had never been so happy. However, the moment she heard the clock strike 12, midnight, then everything goes back to the way it was. She broke away from the prince and ran down the great stairs and out of the palace. Oh, I must hurry up. It's midnight. Prince followed her, but all he could find was a single glass slipper lying on the stairs. The prince asked his soldiers to put up an important notice. The next day, the soldier put up an important notice, which said that every girl in the country must try on the little glass slipper, and the prince will marry the girl who can wear it. The messenger went into many houses, but the glass slipper didn't fit anyone. At last, it was Cinderella's turn. And as soon as she slipped her foot in the slipper, it fit her perfectly. Cinderella's stepsisters were filled with envy. As soon as the messenger informed the prince, the prince married Cinderella and they lived happily ever after. Long ago, there lived a rich merchant and his three daughters. One day, as the merchant was to go abroad for some work, he asked his daughters, What shall I bring for you? We want nice clothes and fine jewels. We want nice clothes and fine jewels. Father, there are no red roses in our garden. Please get me a pair. The merchant promised their gifts and went on his journey. On his way, he came upon a castle. When he went a little closer, he saw that the castle was surrounded by a rose garden. The merchant was amazed by its beauty. At the same time, he was reminded of his youngest daughter Beauty's request. Here I can get the red roses for Beauty. So, he decided to take the roses from the garden. He quickly plucked two red roses and was just about to leave when he heard a loud roar behind him. How dare you pluck flowers from my garden? Two! Only two roses! I plucked them for my daughter Beauty. Please let me go. On one condition, you must bring your daughter Beauty to me or else your whole family will be destroyed. Mm. The merchant went home and narrated his sad story to his daughter. Beauty readily agreed to go to the castle with her father. They reached the castle. Good! Now your father can go home. And you will stay with me. Beauty waved a sad farewell to her father. What shall I call you? You may call me Beast. Beauty started to live with the Beast. The Beast gave her a magical mirror in which she could see her family. One day, 
beauty saw in the mirror that her father was ill. Let me go home. All right. But if you don't return within a week, I will die. Of course, I'll be back in a week. All went fine and her father regained good health very soon. Before Beauty knew what had happened, 10 days had passed. Beauty took the magical mirror and saw that the beast was severely ill. I must return. I can't let him die like this. And she rushed towards his castle. There in the castle, the beast was lying still. Oh beast, oh beast, I did not mean to stay away so long. Please do not die. Please come back to me. She kissed his ugly head. Just then, there was a sudden flash of light, and the beast was transformed into a handsome prince. Beauty, my dear, I was under an evil spell of a witch. The spell could only be broken when a beautiful girl loved me and wanted me in spite of my ugliness. The spell was broken when you kissed me. The prince and the beauty married and lived happily ever after. Long ago, there lived a lonely old woman. One day, she decided to bake a man of gingerbread to give her company. So she mixed the dough and shaped the body. Then she used some currants for his eyes and nose and sugar for his coat. It's now ready to bake. The old woman gently placed the gingerbread man inside the oven. After a little while, she went to take him out. But as soon as she touched the gingerbread man, he sprang out of her hands, calling as he ran. Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I am the gingerbread man. <laughs> As the gingerbread man ran out of the old woman's house, a cow spotted him. The cow called out, Stop! Gingerbread man, you look good to eat! I have run from an old woman! Run! Run as fast as you can! You can't catch me! I am gingerbread man! <laughs> The cow ran after the old woman and soon they all passed a horse. Stop! I'd like to eat you. I have run from an old woman and a cow. <laughs> run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I am gingerbread man. <laughs> It seemed to be a never-ending chase. Now the horse followed the gingerbread man and the cow and the old woman followed them far behind. The gingerbread man was feeling proud of himself. A few miles ahead, a fox saw the gingerbread man. His mouth started watering. The gingerbread man called out to the fox. As fast as you can! You can't catch me! I am gingerbread man! <laughs> 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 
Why should I bother to catch you? Just after the gingerbread man ran past the fox, he had to stop because he came to a wide, deep, swift flowing river. The fox thought to himself, that gingerbread man would be good to eat. So he said, don't be afraid, I won't harm you. Jump on my back and I'll take you across the river. The gingerbread man jumped on the fox's back and the fox began to swim. As they reached the middle of the river, the fox said, Can you stand on my head, gingerbread man? Or you will get wet. So, the gingerbread man pulled himself up and stood on the fox's head. As the current flowed more swiftly, the fox said, Can you move on to my nose, gingerbread man, so that I can carry you more safely? I would not like you to drown. The gingerbread man slid onto the fox's nose. The fox suddenly tossed the gingerbread man into the air and ate him in one gulp. Mmm, it was good. The gingerbread man disappeared into the fox's mouth and was never seen again. Once upon a time, there was a duck. She lived in a small clearing in the forest. One day, she laid some eggs. After warming them carefully, the duck waited for the eggs to hatch. Oh, my little ones! How cute they would be! As she watched, three of her eggs cracked and three lovely ducklings came into the world. Mother Duck was overjoyed. But the largest egg was still there. At last, the great egg burst. Large and grey and ugly it was. The mother duck looked at it. Oh no, he can't be my baby. How ugly he is and how different from my other children. The ugly duckling was hated by his brothers and sisters. They would often mock at him. How unattractive you are. You can't be one of us. The ugly duckling felt so sad that he ran away from home one day. Wandering alone, the ugly duckling came upon a house. As he peeped inside, he saw an old woman sitting idle. At her foot sat a cat and a hen. The old woman looks kind. She has a cat and a hen as pets. Suddenly, the woman noticed the duckling. Who are you? Come in! At first, 
the woman cuddled the duckling. But the very next moment, she screamed at him in anger. Away from here, you ugly duckling! Then the duckling ran out of the house. Once again, the poor duckling went walking through the dark woods. He spent his days sobbing and nights crying. He felt lonely and miserable, but the ugly duckling was hopeful in his heart. Then one day, the duckling saw a pond. His eyes lit up in joy as he had seen water after so many days. Ah! A pond! My favorite place! The ugly duckling hopped of joy and waded into the pond. He swam to his satisfaction. But his happiness was short-lived. Winter had set in and the cold wind had started to blow. Due to the cold weather, even the pond had frozen. Now, the ugly duckling couldn't swim. A little while later, a kind farmer happened to pass that way. Taking pity on the duckling's miserable condition, he took him home. The farmer nursed the duckling and soon the bird was well. Then the farmer left the duckling in the pond. One morning, the duckling saw some beautiful swans around him. The duckling was ashamed of himself and bowed his head low. But what did he see in the water? He saw beneath him his own form, no longer that of an ugly grey bird. It was the reflection of a swan. The duckling was amazed. Actually, he had grown into a beautiful swan. Hello brother. Welcome to our community. You are the most beautiful among us. The ugly duckling remembered how he had been laughed at and cruelly treated. And he now heard the swans say that he was the most beautiful among them. Now, he was no more the ugly duckling. Once upon a time, there were three bears who lived in a house in the forest. One morning, their breakfast porridge was too hot to eat. So they decided to go for a walk in the forest and the three strolled out. After a while, there came a small girl. She had nice golden hair and so the people called her Goldilocks. As she walked past the beautiful cottage of the three bears, it caught her eyes. How beautiful is this cottage? Let me see who lives in here. Goldilocks slowly walked up to the cottage and knocked at the door. Anybody in? In front of her was a table with three chairs. One large chair, one middle sized chair and one small chair. On the table were three bowls of porridge. One large bowl, 
one middle sized bowl and one small bowl goldilocks was hungry the porridge smells delicious so she sat in the great big chair picked up the large spoon and tried some of the porridge from the big bowl but the spoon was heavy and the porridge too hot goldilocks jumped off quickly and went to the middle sized chair but this chair was far too soft and when she tried the porridge from the middle sized bowl it was too cold so she went over to the little chair and picked up the smaller spoon and tried some of the porridge from the tiny bowl this time it was neither too hot nor too cold it was just right and so delicious that she ate it all up but she was too heavy for the little chair and it broke in pieces under her weight next Goldilocks went upstairs where she found three beds. There was a great big bed, a middle-sized bed, and a tiny little bed. She was feeling rather tired, so she climbed into the big bed and lay down. The big bed was very hard and far too big. Then she tried the middle sized bed but that was far too soft So she climbed into the tiny little bed it was neither too hard nor too soft in fact it felt just right all cozy and warm and in no time at all goldilocks fell fast asleep In a little while the three bears came back from their walk in the forest When they saw their house in a mess, they were mad with shock and anger. Who has entered our house? Somebody has been sitting in my chair. Somebody has been sitting in my chair and has broken it. Then Father Bear looked at his bowl of porridge and he said in his great big growly voice, "Somebody has been eating my porridge." Somebody has been eating my porridge. Somebody has been eating my porridge and has eaten it all up. Then the three bears went upstairs. And the father bear saw at once that his bed was untidy. Somebody has been sleeping in my bed. Somebody has been sleeping in my bed. Look father Somebody is sleeping in my bed. He squeaked so loudly that Goldilocks woke up with a start. She jumped out of bed and away she ran, down the stairs and out into the forest. Then Mother Bear prepared fresh porridge and they all sat down together and enjoyed the breakfast. Once upon a time there was a boy named Jack. He lived with his mother in a small cottage. Jack and his mother were very poor and their most valuable possession was their cow. One morning Jack's mother called him and said, "Jack, take the cow to the market and get a good price for her so we can buy food." "All right, mother." So Jack set out to the market along with the cow. On his way to the market, Jack met an old man. I know you are going to sell this cow. Give it to me and take this magic beans. Jack was thrilled. He quickly gave the cow to the old man and took the beans and ran home. Jack showed the beans to his mother. Mother, see 
see what I brought. How could you hand over our cow for five old beans? What will we live on now? We shall starve to death, you stupid boy. And then she threw the beans out of the window. That night, the beanstalk reached right into the clouds. When Jack woke the next morning, there was a huge towering beanstalk right outside the window where his mother had thrown the beans. Let me see what's up there. Far beyond the clouds, there was a magnificent castle. The beanstalk led Jack right to the door of the castle. Jack became curious and walked in. Inside, there were many rooms. Walking slowly, Jack came into a large room filled with sacks and barrels of gold coins. And in a corner, there was a giant snoring in deep sleep. Jack picked up as many gold coins as he could and ran to the door. Climbing down the beanstalk, Jack reached back home. Mother, look what I've bought for you. We will never be poor again. Mother was thrilled to see the gold coins. Jack then told her about the palace and the giant. Jack and his mother used the gold to buy food. But the day came when the money ran out and Jack decided to climb the beanstalk again. Once again he went to the giant's palace. This time Jack found that the giant had a hen with him. Every time he said, Lay! The hen laid an egg of solid gold. Jack wanted to take the hen home. He waited until the giant fell asleep. As soon as the giant was snoring, Jack picked up the hen, but the hen started crowing loudly. Jack raced down the room towards the beanstalk with the giant's footsteps thundering behind him. Wait, you thief! How dare you take away my precious hand? Jack started to climb down the beanstalk. The giant followed. At last, he reached the ground and seizing an axe, he chopped the beanstalk with all his might. The giant came tumbling down and lay dead at their feet. Jack showed the hen to his mother. Mother, this hen lays golden eggs. Jack, you were clever to exchange the cow for the magic beans. From that day on, Jack and his mother lived happily for a long, long time. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. One day, they set out from the farm where they had been born. They were going 
going out into the world to start new lives and enjoy any adventures that might come their way. The first little pig met a man carrying some straw. Please sir, can I have some straw to build myself a house? Of course little pig. He gave the little pig a big bundle of straw. Little pig built himself a lovely house of golden straw. A big bad wolf lived nearby. He came along and saw the new house and called out to the pig through the window. Let me in. I love fat little pigs. No, no. I'll not let you in. Then I'll huff and I'll puff till I blow your house in. And he huffed and he puffed until the house of straw fell in. by running across the field and hiding under the hedge. The second little pig was walking along the road when he met a man with a bundle of sticks. Please sir, can you let me have some of those sticks so that I can build a house? Of course. The man gave the pig a big bundle of sticks. Along came the same wolf. When he saw another little pig, this time in a house made of sticks, he called out. Little pig, let me come in. No, no, I'll not let you in. Then I'll huff and I'll puff till I blow your house in. And he huffed and he puffed until the house fell in. managed to come out of the back door and hide behind a tree. The third little pig met a man with a cartload of bricks. Please sir, can I have some bricks to build myself a house? Of course, my little pig. Gave some bricks to the little pig. He 
built his house with the bricks and a fine strong house it was. His two friends, the other little pigs came to visit him. You have built a fine strong house. The wolf blew away my house of straw. Yes, and he blew down my house of sticks. Never mind. We will all live here and make a plan to catch the wolf. Before long, the wolf came by. The wolf was feeling very hungry by now. He called out, "Little pig, let me come in." No, no, I'll not let you in. Then I'll huff in the help of till I blow your house in. And the wolf huffed and he puffed, and he huffed and he puffed. And he huffed again and puffed again, but the brick house was too strong to blow over. The wolf was very angry that he could not blow over the brick house, so he shouted to the pig, "I shall climb down the chimney and then eat you for supper." The other two little pigs shook with fright, but the third pig was thinking hard. Help me put this cooking pot of boiling water on the fire. The three little pigs put the pot over the fire just as the wolf came down the chimney. Into the boiling water he plopped, and the little pig put on the lid, and they all held it down. So that was the end of the wolf. Now we can all live in peace. Later they collected some more bricks and built enough rooms onto the strong little house for all the three pigs to live together in safety. Come on little bunnies, give thumbs up for the video, share with your friends and subscribe to our channel for more awesome videos.